ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணாஜே குட் ஈவினிங் டு ஆல் ஐ மகேந்திரன் ஃப்ரம் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் ஃபிசிக்ஸ் ஆஃப் தியாராஜ காலேஜ் ஆஃப் இன்ஜினியரிங் ஐ லைக் டு தேங்க் தி ஆர்கனைசர்ஸ் ஐஐடி பாம்பே அண்ட் தியாராஜ காலேஜ் ஆஃப் இன்ஜினியரிங் ஃபார் கிவிங் அன் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி டு மேக் அன் இன்ட்ராக்ஷன் வித் திஸ் ஆகஸ்ட் கேதரிங் ஆன் தி அக்கேஷன் ஆஃப் தி இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் டு ரிசர்ச் மெத்தடாலஜிஸ் ஸோ த டாபிக் ஆஃப் மை டுடேஸ் டாக்கஸ் ஸ்மார்ட் மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் smart material is one of the important materials which occupies almost all the places in science and technology which plays a crucial role in developing most of the home appliances right from the kitchen to the space applications so these days most of the multinational companies including the boeing flight corporations they have identified this material as one of the futuristic material of course this material is going to rule the world soon or later fine so there are various applications of the smart materials starting from the sensor to the actuator to the processor so this slide gives you the importance of the materials how to select the material is very very important now this picture shows the the twin tower of the new york city where this building collapsed by the plane crash those the structure of this building is very well of course it was the structure was well designed and it was very strong because of the use of the various uh, materials like steel and iron materials and the base is very broader and the, the structure the base is very broader and it makes a cone shaped structure the structure uses various materials very strong materials though the structure is very strong but collapsed because of the heat added to the heat added to the material used in the construction of this building when the heat is added to the burning fuels the whole structure is melted and as a result the whole structure or the whole building is pancaked or buckled like anything so what i am trying to say here is that the material selection is important and we should find out we should discover a new material to withstand this type of uh, unexpected attack smart material is one of the strongest material which is used to i mean uh, save cut any type of construction or any type of system and this uh, slide shows you the definition of smart material smart material is basically defined as the material based on the association of sensors able to both sense and communicate with outside intelligence these materials can be i mean the material property can be changed by changing the atmosphere whenever there is a change in the atmosphere the material property can also be changed can also be altered or which can be changed easily because these materials are generated by these three parameters namely the sensors actuator and the processor sensor is a device which gets input from the outside intelligence that means one has to give some stimulus the stimulus what i mean is the temperature stress magnetic field electric field whatever so these these stimuli must be given to the sensor as a result the actuator responds to the sensor the actuator is a basically a mechanical device which starts vibrating like this and uh, the processor the combination of sensor and actuator is a processor so the whole process will be completed only at the end at the third uh, third section of this one so therefore, therefore smart material is a material or smart material is defined as the material based on the association of sensor and be able to communicate with outside intelligence easily the best example for smart material is the mosquito biting our human body itself is the best example for the smart material right from the hand to leg on all the skin flesh everything is the examples for smart material our skin is the best sensor which senses suppose if the mosquito is sitting away if, if the mosquito sits on this place so the brain orders the hand or the brain tells the hand just to hit the i mean the mosquito so what i'll do is the hand starts its action like so basically this is an actuator it starts vibration like this so what i'll is this will do like this so the sensor skin is a sensor and this is an actuator it will do this so the process will be completed so this type of uh, smart material has been carried out i started learning this uh, smart material at the mit usa under the discover of uh, the robert o handley robert o handley is one of the discoverers of ferromagnetic shape mirror alloy i did my postdoc under his guidance at mit usa 
So the next slide, so this type of material can be classified into various uh, types. One of the important types is the ferromagnetic shape mirror alloy or in general shape mirror alloy. Basically, smart materials are classified into various classes starting from piezoelectric material, magnetostructive material, electrological fluid, magnetological fluid. Of all these materials, shape mirror alloy is one of the pioneer class of smart materials. So my area of research is focused on the ferromagnetic shape mirror alloys. Here, these materials, how these materials are classified will be discussed here. So this left slide, this is a driving force. The various driving forces used in the various shape mirror alloy is this one. Heat is one of the driving force used in nickel titanium. Basically, shape mirror alloy is an alloy which retains its original shape even after severe deformation. Only because because of the presence of these two phases. The two phases are the martensite phase, which is a low temperature region, and the austenite phase, which is a high temperature region. That means when the material is heated, the material which is in the room temperature will go up. Of course, if the material is heated, it, go, it goes up. And if it is cooled down, the material will come down. The temperature will be decreased, and it will come down. So again, it is heated, it goes up, it comes down. So it, this, this is a type of cyclic process. Shape memory alloy is an alloy which memorizes its shape. That means what I am trying to say is it retains its original shape. That means it memorizes its the shape and dimension. Because of the presence of these two phases, the martensite is a low temperature region, or basically it is a cubic structure, and the austenite is a high temperature region, it is the tetragonal structure. So these two structures are changed from cubic to austenite, I mean uh, cubic to tetragonal and tetragonal to cubic. So therefore. The shape memory material can also be called the memory material or the muscle material or cyclic material or the hysteric material. This type of shape memory alloy can be classified into the various materials like uh, nitty, PZ, tefnol, and nickel manganese gallium. And the first material is the conventional shape memory alloy. The shape and dimension of the material can be changed by applying the temperature. See, the ultimate aim of producing or discovering any shape of an alloy is to produce or to generate strain. To some extent, you can generate a strain. Nickel titanium is one of the uh, advanced shape mirror alloys, or one of the, sorry, conventional shape mirror alloys, which produces 8% of strain. And the same amount of 8% of strain can be used in the manufacturing of the uh, sensor and actuator. And whereas the nickel manganese gallium is one of the magnetic shape mirror alloy or the ferromagnetic shape mirror alloys which responds the, to the application of the magnetic field. That means what I'm trying to say is the dimension, shape, and the total structure of the material or the total toucher, structure of the device can be changed by applying a small amount of magnetic field. Even the 0.1 Tesla can change the entire structure of the material. Whereas on the other hand, the nickel titanium is one of the convention shape mineral alloys where the dimension can be changed by applying tremendous amount of temperature. It means that, that is a major drawback of the nickel titanium shape mirror alloy. Whereas there's the major advantage of the ferromagnetic shape mirror alloy is that the, it, it responds to the application of a small amount of magnetic field. Now, the driving force, magnetic field is one of the driving forces given to the nickel manganese gallium ferromagnetic shape mirror alloy. As a result, this material can be used to fabricate your own sensor and actuator. So the ultimate objective is to fabricate the sensor and actuator using these type of uh, the smart materials. Now, the, just uh, the pictorial representation of uh, the difference between convention shape mirror law and uh, the uh, ferromagnetic shape mirror law is this. Here in convention shape mirror law, temperature is applied. As a result, the shape is changed. And this is one of the ferromagnetic shape mirror law, but still the strain produced. The strain is the important root cause to fabricate your own sensor and actuator. But here in the case of the tefnol, the strain produced is just only 0.2 percentage. As a result, this cannot be used for a constructive purpose. Because, why? Because is this arrow represents the magnetic moment, and the small square represents the domain. So in any ferromagnetic material, domain walls are present, or domain, many domains are present. Domain is the smallest region in which the magnetic moment is present. Now, here, within the domain, the magnetic moment is rotating. As a result, you can produce only 0.2 percentage of strain. But this is a very, very low strain, uh, low strain percentage, which cannot be used for uh, the constructive application. 
Whereas here in the ferromagnetic shape in a loy, the twins are moving actually, or the magnetic moment is moving. As a result, the twin boundaries are moving. So if the twin boundaries are moving, the uh, actual uh, the start uh, the the what is called the actuator start on moving actually. That means the response in this material, the response of this material is very very faster when compared with these two material. That means when the temperature is applied, the nickel titanium actuator works like this. There is a slow motion, the slow response is there. On the other hand, in the ferromagnetic shape mineral alloy, if an actuator is made of the nickel minus gallium ferromagnetic shape mineral alloy, and uh, when a small amount of magnetic field is applied, the actuation response is like this. Whereas in the conventional material, it is very slow, whereas here it is very fast. That is why this material is uh, more superior than the conventional shape mineral alloy. So the next slide, so next what I am going to try is, what is the motivation of this talk? What is the importance of this material? It will be discussed here actually. Now here I just saw the nickel titanium is one of the conventional materials, where the strain produced in this nickel titanium is, of course it is 8%. The red circle represents the amount of strain percentage produced in nickel titanium. And uh, on the other hand, in the x-axis, just you can look at that, the frequency is very, very lower. Of course, lower frequency, but higher bandwidth, higher uh, strain rate is produced. Whereas, if you look at the terphenol, the strain produced is just 0.2 percentage, roughly 0.2 percentage of strain is produced in terphenol. Terphenol is one of the magnetostatic materials, whereas the frequency is higher. Higher frequency, strain is lower. On the other hand, what you need is, we need a material which should possess both higher frequency and the higher strain. So we have chosen a material in such a way that that material possess high frequency and high strain. So nickel, ma manganese, gallium, ferromagnetic shape mineral alloy is one of the important materials which possess the high strain percentage and responses high frequency. That is why we are interested in choosing this ferromagnetic shape mineral alloy. Therefore, if the material possesses high frequency, this can be used for the actual application. As a result, the response will be larger here. That's it. I mean, okay, that's it. Thank you. No, 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 no